35% looks like a great number in absolute, but it's not something that is sustainable. You have good years, you have bad years, and equity markets on average give you 12 to 15%. So I think these numbers last year are, of course, an average. His portfolio is up 45% in the last year. Now, don't go write a headline that Shark and CEO was outsmarted by a two-year man <laughs> because that is exactly what I see happening. Usually when you have this conversation with me, it's rather boring because my principle is that I do short-term shifts in the portfolio, you know, once a year, but I do major structural changes once in four or five years. And I happened to do that last year. I am a net saver and a very aggressive net saver. And I really have time horizon to give my investment. So, I've got 40% in balance, which is reasonably conservative. I'm happy to offset it with 30% in mid and small cap. You know, incomes had increased, so I had not increased my monthly SIP amounts. And I went back and recalibrated, and you know, suddenly money was just accumulating in my bank account. So I've really upped my SIP amounts to be very aggressive now. We get about one hour, 15 minutes. I think an average pitch lasts one to one hour, 15 minutes. There is no data or sheet that is shared with you in advance. There are three investments that I have done so far that have aired. There is a company I'm super excited about called Two Hands, uh, which makes these smart calculators to solve the ledger problem of shopkeepers. In this episode of Guru Portfolios, we have with us a very special guest. She is the only woman CEO in the mutual fund industry and one of the youngest CEOs in the mutual fund industry. She is now also a shark on the latest season of Shark Tank India. By now, you must have guessed it who she is. Yes, she is none other than Radhika Gupta, MD and CEO of Edelweiss Mutual Fund. Hi Radhika, welcome to the latest episode of Guru Portfolios. How have you been? I have been very well. I've been super busy but very well. So Radhika, uh, we wanted to ask you, what's your current asset allocation like? How has it changed over the last one year to 12 months? This has been a year where there have been meaningful changes. Usually when you have this conversation with me, it's rather boring because my principle is that I do short term shifts in the portfolio, you know, once a year, but I do major structural changes once in four or five years. And I happened to do that last year in between these conversations. The reason for the structural shift was a couple of things. One time had passed and I think four or five years is a very good point to reevaluate your asset allocation, uh, the performance of the funds that uh, you are invested in. Your goals also change. Uh, for instance, we had completed a house purchase as a family. Uh, we had a son and, uh, you know, then I also started doing Shark Tank. So that had some impact on liquidity. So I think a couple of things happened and that's why um, you know, incomes have changed, all of that happened. So I had the chance to do this one time or, uh, you know, once in five years kind of structural change in the portfolio. And I made a couple of decisions and then I'll tell you the asset allocation. One was to generally uh, increase the quantum of equity investments and become a little more aggressive in my equity investments. I've typically been more conservative because both me and my husband are financial services professionals, so it's a high risk profession. We had a major goal, which was a house largely out of the way, construction, all of that. We felt we could get aggressive, you know, about 18 months ago, so we started doing that. So you will see a little cut down in balanced fund and hybrid exposure and more uptick in equity exposure. And I'll give you the numbers. The second thing that happened over this period is debt taxation happened, right? And uh, international funds got fully taxed and we've always invested in international funds. So while we grandfathered our old investments, incremental investments we've started to do through funds that have more of an Indo-global kind of uh, blend in mind. You know, you recently launched one here. So uh, that that was a second change. Uh, set up uh, the portfolio. My husband uh, really set up a portfolio for our son a while ago. So we added to that. So these were, you know, a couple of major actions that happened. And so now what you have is a portfolio that's about a little less than 40% or 38% balanced advantage funds, uh, largely because I like that category. Um, you have about 15% in large cap equity. That I decided to do through a large and mid cap index fund. Uh, that's, that's what I call my large and mid cap equity exposure. Then we have about 30% I have in mid and small cap funds. Uh, that number has gone up. 
that's through actively managed funds and then there's about a little less than 10% in international funds which is mostly residual and a little less than 10% whatever the balancing figure is in unlisted investments uh, so that's the current breakup of investments so in mid and small and this by the way i have to say it excludes a couple of things so it excludes contingency it excludes esop and it excludes the sebi statutory invest investment that mutual fund uh, professionals have to do radhika the 10% exposure you have in alternate does that include the shark tank startups right now it doesn't right now it's old uh, unlisted or aif investments since we've had that business as well uh once the shark tank startups actually materialize in complete due diligence they will fall into this bucket so that becomes my less liquid bucket uh was it a conscious call uh, to double that exposure no no so it has partly doubled because of mark to market uh, you know mid and small caps have been up meaningfully uh it was a conscious call to dial up risk in the level of the portfolio but uh mark to market has also played a part uh so it's a combination of two things that have happened and obviously it's a call that has worked very well over the last year as a going forward basis am i comfortable with 30% in mid and small cap yes i am because if i look at my personal finances i am a net saver and a very aggressive net saver and i really have time horizon to give my investment so I've got 40% in balanced which is reasonably conservative I'm happy to offset it with 30% in mid and small cap and do you have a uh, savings target that you like to stick to yeah i try to do about 45 to 50% of my post tax and post uh, mandatory investment uh, salary as a deduction uh, as a savings target and i am able to achieve that so i think my three big buckets are emi home emi which has come down over time expenses uh, for the house and whatever and the third is saving so 45 to 50% is what i like to target and what i am able to hit one of the things i realize and you know i am mentioning it so viewers don't make this mistake when i did this review is you know incomes had increased so i had not increased my monthly sip amounts and i went back and recalibrated and you know suddenly money was just accumulating in my bank account so i've really upped my sip amounts to be very aggressive now because we get paid in three components we get paid a monthly income we get paid bonuses and then we have long term incentives so from my monthly income my sip amount is actually quite substantial and do you look at real estate as an investment do you invest in real estate as well no outside a primary home no i think a primary home i don't think of as an investment because it's a place to live and uh, we don't intend to sell it and even if we were to sell it we would buy something else so it's it's not really an investment i bought a house in 2014 changed it in uh, 18 and finally got possession of it a couple of years ago so i don't look at that outside of my primary home i don't do other real estate investments uh, i have to say periodically the temptation has come let's buy a vacation home let's do this let's do that but i've been reasonably disciplined about that uh, because for the large part i like in my investments to be liquid and what percentage of your portfolio is in edelweiss schemes that is i think about 70 odd percent i mean it's it's usually weird around that mark and that includes legacy plus incremental incremental will be high uh i think because of some regulatory changes the only category uh where i've had to go outside edelweiss last year is things like arbitrage where there are very short term investments because there are some regulatory reasons uh but otherwise uh, you know 70% continues to be edelweiss and it's across categories but uh, apart from edelweiss do you have any uh, non arbitrage investments yes i do okay i, I do okay. uh i always have had them and uh there is a reason uh that is equity and debt also. yeah I, so i don't do debt okay. as a category edelweiss or non other otherwise uh it surprises people because uh you know they know are very popular debt funds but the reason i don't do debt even pre tax changes because there's no point in paying a home loan and then earning 7 to 8% on debt and i feel i get my balanced fund gives me my debt exposure and i always say in a women's bhasha that balanced fund is equity and debt it's like a one pot meal without the tax incidents and the effort it's like you don't have to do dishes it's just a one pot meal so i don't do debt uh, you know outside of contingency etc i have other equity investments uh, in other amcs and i try to look for investors the way i work is i have five six categories where i want to make investments of course i'll pick an edelweiss fund in each category and that will be the dominant one which is why the high number 
and then the balance i'll allocate to a non edelweiss fund which has a very different investment style from edelweiss so what i am not looking for is diversification for the sake of diversification i am looking at diversification of investment style so if there is a bap that i am picking from edelweiss i don't and was is a trend following bap i don't want another trend following bap i want to pick an amc is doing a good job in bap but with a different style so i get that little bit of style diversification if i am picking a more growth oriented fund from us then i'll pick a slightly value tilted fund in that category from someone else so that's how i tend to think right that's quite interesting radhika uh, now when it comes to mutual fund there is a lot of transparency there is, there are a lot of disclosures yeah. uh, but now you have also been a shark on the latest season of shark tank where i believe you just get 40 minutes to make yeah. an investment decision so how has that been for you and also can you share some startups where uh, you have put your money it's a very different experience and uh, you know most investment professionals uh, who talk to me about the post shark tank experience can't believe that you know you go into a set with no information right because as an investment professional you are armed with so much decision making data and you're not used to just taking a decision on instinct and i tell them firstly this is my own capital so you know when you are in a fiduciary capacity managing regulated capital you have to be much more diligent but we get about 1 hour 15 minutes i think an average pitch lasts 1 to 1 hour 15 minutes there is no data or sheet that is shared with you in advance in fact when you walk on to the set you don't know whether you're seeing a food company or a electronics company or whatever it is you can't even see the display before so in that sense it's really blind you do get time to do diligence on companies which is currently the phase i am in and that is very important because people can make claims on the show but those claims about revenue profit and all have to be true people need to have investable companies uh, that's important and people also need to check the boxes of paying gst and income tax and all of that so i think that's 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 what it was but yes i think decision making in 1 hour 1 hour 15 minutes in a high risk early stage startup even for me was something new but you also realize companies are companies and you know they, there is a certain way you think about companies so the basics matter in terms of investments i think there are three investments that i have done so far that have aired there is a company i'm super excited about called two hands uh, which makes these smart calculators to solve the ledger problem of shopkeepers so the average shopkeeper you know gets money in upi and cash in uh, loans and they can't record it and they can't afford a very fancy point of sale system so two hands and it's it's two it's guys who are 22 years old the founder is 22 years old he's from up um, really worked for 6 years on solving this problem so that's the one i'm most excited about there's a company in the lab grown diamond space uh, called jewel box uh, again i have always like disruptive ideas whether it's our own bharat bond or anything else so that's a category i'm very excited about because it's exploding in other parts of the world i've also turned consumer of lab grown diamonds uh, because of these guys so i don't buy natural diamonds anymore i buy lab grown diamonds it's not something i said often and then there's a third one uh, she's a phenomenal woman entrepreneur she's running a company called dil foods which is trying to solve the problem of restaurants who have excess capacity so really trying to look for companies run by young passionate entrepreneurs who are solving unique problems for india right but are you consciously trying to build a diversified portfolio there you have like so many sectors food uh, you know fintech and uh, you know so are you trying to build consciously is that mutual fund thinking still yeah, somewhere sure. there behind uh, okay, these decisions okay so now that you've told me i've realized it's diversified but that was not the intent at all actually i never went in thinking you know itna exposure to this itna i never i never planned it this way i think this is an outcome i'm trying to find companies that run sensible business models i'm trying to find companies where the causes are things i connect with because unlike mutual fund investing in startup investing you also end up giving time to these companies so you ending up talking to these entrepreneurs on whatsapp or something once a week once a month so you might as well partner with something you enjoy now it's not to say i'll never invest in a sports company but it's not a category where i can easily add value so food diamonds fintech clearly things uh, you know i've been passionate about have run a restaurant so these are all uh, closer to the heart but there's no intent to build a diversified portfolio 
I do want to, however, make sure that I don't invest in seven beauty companies. I mean, that I think is unlikely. It's also very conflicting. And I do want to make sure I invest in some company, in companies that are solving what I call problems for Indian consumers in an Indian way. And I think some of these are. So those are the intents. But no diversification <laughs> in limits that are happening. Right. In that. It's hard to do that in, you know, one hour, 15 minutes. Right, right. And how much of your portfolio is, uh, you know, likely to be uh, invested in these startups? Oh, I think about, I mean, let's see, the season has to air and finish, but let's say a little less than 10% right now. Right, right. Uh, and see, we'll see how it goes, right, you know. Right. I have to say, before Shark Tank, I didn't have a single, even forget unlisted investment, I didn't have any investments that were... Um, even single stocks outside of what I owned in ESOP because our rules are so restrictive one. And I have loved investing through mutual funds. So I always say even the Shark Tank investments I'm doing, I'm not doing them to make returns, right? I mean, returns will be an outcome and I think like a responsible investor. But if you want to make returns in an easy way, that is mutual fund. These you do for support, to add value, to have fun and of course, you know, make some money along the way. But I look at mutual funds as my primary, you know, way to grow wealth. Yeah, and Radhika, how did your portfolio performed on an overall basis over the last year? So I think I was up about 35% in the last year. Uh, I think benchmark indices, the 500 indices would have been about 38. So a little behind that, but broadly in line. It makes sense because I had a balanced fund exposure and international, which is not done as well. But I also had mid and small caps, so they were balancing out. Obviously, I know that 35% looks like a great number in absolute, but it's not something that is sustainable. You have good years, you have bad years, and the equity markets on average give you 12 to 15%. So, I think these numbers last year are, of course, an aberration. And uh, Radhika, uh, coming to your uh, son, uh, who is, I think, around two years now. Yeah, almost two years. Yeah. So, how his portfolio has done, I believe all the investments are in his own name. Can you tell us about you that? You guys are going to troll me on this, but... So, yes, the investments are in his own name. Uh, you know, uh, my husband's been super diligent. So he dragged Remy to uh, the Aadhaar card office when he was a month old to get a picture taken. And he's got a pan card and a bank account. By the way, he paid income tax last year. It was hilarious. His portfolio is up 45% in the last year. Now, don't go write a headline that Shark and CEO was outsmarted by a two-year-old because <laughs> that is exactly what I see happening. But yeah, he, he was up 45%. It makes sense actually because he has really long time horizons. So his risk appetite or the risk appetite that we have given him is significantly higher than us. And coming back to you, Radhika, yeah. uh, what strategy worked for you over the last year? Uh, so I think, of course, taking up equity exposure uh, helped. Uh, you know, mid and small cap exposure certainly helped last year. So that 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 was a bit of a no brainer. Anything you felt, uh, you know, were was a miss in the last year that well, could have I done think better. I have or... I've always it's not a miss, but it's it's it, the fact is it didn't work, right? I have international exposure. Usme there will be an emerging markets fund which will have a component of China, etc. That allocation, and I I believe in that allocation. Clearly, it hasn't performed, and it's it's very rare. Uh, to have a portfolio where everything performs. I mean, real diversification means that, I always tell investors also this, that if everything in your portfolio has made money, then perhaps it's not as uh, diversified. So there's always something that didn't work. So in that case, it was this emerging markets uh, exposure that hasn't done well. My son's portfolio, however, I was looking at today, he only has three funds. All three funds have done equally well and they're all reasonably different. And which categories these are in? <laughs> so he is in an international tech fund uh, and uh, he is in an actively managed small cap fund, our own. And he is in a large and mid cap index. He's in, and he's in a mid, mid cap fund. So mid cap funds, small cap funds, uh, large and mid cap funds and tech. Right. And everything is done. <laughs> so what is this? <laughs> And, and Radhika, uh, what about uh, insurance, what about health cover, what about life cover? Uh, can you tell us about that? So my life cover and health cover since I have started working for the family has been provided uh, by uh, my employer. And so far that has been sufficient. But, you know, as we're getting older now, family, we are thinking of increasing our health cover. 
and to be honest it's a little bit of a debate because i have had a mixed experience with these things including when i delivered and we are wondering whether the right approach is to have just a corpus allocated for health or to take a really expensive uh, you know health cover so this is a debate that we've been having my husband and i about what we want to do we have health insurance we have life insurance but do we want to take up our health cover now that you know we're still young enough to get it at a reasonable rate or do we just want to have a corpus so right? you know my parents incidentally have always had health cover from the government so that's been taken care of and everything that i seem to get in comparison to their health cover doesn't look as exciting so still debating and radhika how much uh, are you covered through your employer cover so i don't remember the exact number but i think it is some 7 8 lakh something like that uh, so that's been provided by my employer and so for so far it's been reasonably adequate and as i said we are evaluating whether we want to increase that privately as well and what about emergency corpus how many months of provision you have oh quite a bit so i mean my emergency fund and contingency these days is a little bit larger one uh, i would have over 12 months of contingency it's just a paranoia that we have second is i've kept quite a bit of that uh, money in contingency just to fund the shark tank investments as and when the deals to materialize and uh, as and when the diligence process uh, gets over which i'm hoping will happen in the next three odd months and uh, radhika before we let you go can you share some advice for women investors as we just celebrated women's day and also any words of wisdom for first time investors so for women investors i think my advice has always been get started and actually get started investing and don't outsource this so i think this always been a reason whether it's laziness or lack of confidence to say papa ko karne do isko karne do usko karne do and i really believe that once women start on their investment journey they realize they're damn capable of doing this in fact if we look at the we just had a women's day event with mothers and mother-in-laws of employees and we were sharing some stats and if we look at the where women have invested in our own funds their skew tends to be more wholesome funds more bafs more multi caps etc and they skip the thematic ideas as compared to men so i think they are very good investors so the the real tip is get started don't worry if you make mistakes men make mistakes women make mistakes and investment is about learning and making mistakes and even if you start with a small amount it i think it will help you and grow with confidence so that's that's the only advice i i don't think women need more advice than that for young and first time investors and for everybody in general i think it's very important to moderate expectations you know a few days ago an uncle was having a conversation with my father and he's like aajkal to market ka aisa haal hai koi bhi paisa bana leta hai bas hat dalo aur paisa banta hai and that kind of narrative starts to scare me so you see these 35 40% returns over the last one year and your suddenly your expectation of equity returns goes up and then someone like me says 12% and you look at me and say what are you talking about the reality is equity markets give you nominal gdp growth or earning growth plus i mean and there is volatility around that so i think moderating expectations is important i also think first time investors need to start with simple products so increasingly i think is india is developing the complexity of offerings that is out there yeah, i think it channelizes your inner greed and you need to tame that down and just go for simple things we finally are in a country where there are 10 plus crore crypto crypto users and online gaming users and 4 crore mutual fund investors so just picking simple stuff and starting thanks a lot radhika for joining us today and sharing all those insights Hope you found this conversation insightful and we'll be back with a new episode very soon so stay tuned on mint